The minute the history teacher walked in, a sudden hush fell over the classroom. She was in absolute terror. That day, she announced a flash quiz and immediately turned her beady eyes to me. Annette, when was America's Declaration of Independence signed? Oh, thank God. I knew that one. 2nd of August, ma'am. Are you stupid? Everyone knows it's the 4th of July. Oh, actually, that's not true. Everyone thinks it's the same as Independence Day, but she slammed her book on the table. Enough. If you keep making things up, your nose will grow longer. I never make things up, ma'am, and that's not true. Otherwise, all grown-ups would have very long noses. She looked like she was about to blow a fuse. You listen to me. I'm big and you're small. I'm smart and you're dumb and that's the truth. Do you have any objection? Yes, ma'am. I don't think you're very smart. As soon as the words were out, I clapped my hands on my mouth. I knew what was coming up next was the nightmare of every kid at Fairview School. I was immediately sent to the principal. She was worse than Miss Trunchbull in the movie Matilda. Miss Una turned around in her high chair and I shuddered. She was only five feet tall and always wore the most hideous pink clothes. And we all knew she was absolutely vile. So, Annette, why did you do that? Do you think your teachers are dumb? Do you think I'm dumb? I really didn't want to answer that. Y yes, c kinda. She walked over to me slowly, and I could see the fury in her eyes. Do you want to know a secret? I really hate children. I don't know how your mother can stand you. I'm calling her now. When mom arrived and found out what had happened, she turned to me angrily. Are you out of your mind? You can't talk to your teachers like that. Mom, I only told the truth, and you should defend me. That's what good mothers do. Oh, you think I'm a bad mother now? Sometimes. Hi, I'm Annette, and no, I promise I'm not a rude kid. I just have a medical condition that makes it impossible for me to tell a lie. But before I continue, click like and subscribe. Mom scolded me all the way home, but as soon as we got there, we were both shocked to see police cars outside. What seems to be the problem, officer? Uh, seems like your husband's mixed up with some really shady people. Have either of you seen this man around the house? Oh, no, sir, never. I've seen him. I was horrified. Suddenly, everyone's eyes were on me. Uh, I saw him last night in, in Daddy's study. He gave him some papers, and Daddy put them in his safe. And before I knew it, Dad was taken away in handcuffs. Mom dragged me inside the house. You think it's funny to say the first thing that comes into your stupid head? You just sent your dad to prison. Mom, I, I didn't mean to. You know I can't tell lies. I've had it with your nonsense. Everyone can tell lies. And with that, she flung herself onto the couch and sobbed loudly for the rest of the evening. I snuck off to my room, feeling like the world's worst daughter. I quietly crept out of the house early next morning and headed off to school. I really needed to see my best friend, Janet. When she saw me, she came over and hugged me tight. Hello, Miss Popular Overnight. Everyone's talking about you. Everyone heard about how you talked back to the cranky witches. You're practically our new hero. And everyone was giving me fist bumps and high fives in the corridors. Was I cool now? Usually, it was just me and Janet at lunch. But today, it seemed like everyone wanted to sit at our table. A little while later, Monica, the principal's niece, came over. Oh, hasn't anyone read the morning paper today? Here you go. With that, she threw it on the table for everyone to see. And my eyes widened in horror. Splashed all across the front page were pictures of Dad being taken away by the police. Are you a little criminal too, Annette? Do you get the highest marks in class by cheating? Like daddy, like daughter. I felt so mad. Putting people down doesn't make you cool, Monica. It just makes you a jerk. And I don't need to cheat to get good grades. Try opening a book sometimes. It's not that hard to be smart. There was a stunned silence. And then suddenly, everyone started cheering and clapping. Monica looked livid as she stormed off. Someone quickly threw the paper away and Janet pressed my hand. Dude, I wish I could be like you. No one dares talk to Monica like that. You're so brave and cool. Teach me. Oh, I don't think I can. It's just the way I was born. I bet your mom is so proud to have a daughter like you. Oh, yeah, really proud. When I got home that day, 
there were police officers swarming all over the place again. The minute mom saw me, she screamed angrily. We're getting evicted, and they're taking everything. And before I knew it, we'd lost our home and moved into the tiniest apartment. I even had to share a bed with mom. She kept kicking me in her sleep all night. The next morning, she threw another bombshell on me. If you want to go to college, Missy, you better get a scholarship. There's no way I can afford your tuition fees now. Things weren't great at home, but I'd suddenly become the most popular person at school. Janet said that the teachers treated me nicely now because they didn't want to get themselves insulted by me. Everyone at school thought I was a legend. Since that day, the principal was after me with a vengeance. She just seemed to be everywhere, ready to punish me over the dumbest thing. One day, Janet was showing me this cute boy on Instagram who worked at the same coffee shop as her. As we were swooning over his pictures, suddenly, Miss Una's shrill voice nearly made me drop the phone. Boys and girls must always be two feet away from one another. Um, do you see any boys around, Miss Una? Don't try to be oversmart. Detention for you both. I started to spend a lot of time in detention. I could only look forward to getting out of here soon. I started working on my college applications and scholarships, and all the teachers were helping me out, except one, of course, the history teacher. When she returned my last assignment, I was horrified to see a big fat D on it. But ma'am, this assignment was really well-researched, and she just stuffed her fingers in her ears. La 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 la. And with that, she just walked away. I was never going to get a scholarship without perfect grades. One day when I was studying in the library, I heard someone say, Psst. I turned around to see that it was Monica. What do you want? Oh, nothing. But I have something you want. When I looked at the paper she put on the table, I gasped. Final history exam. OMG, this is the exam for tomorrow. Where did you get that? Are you trying to get me expelled? No, I'm helping you get the perfect grade you want. I don't need your help. Take this back. What's going on, girls? What's that you're fighting over? I turned around in horror to see Miss Una, and before I knew it, she'd snatched the paper from my hand. Oh my, look what we have here. In my office. Now, I couldn't believe the two had actually set me up. Miss Una closed the door behind her and turned to me. The apple never falls too far away from the tree, does it? Just like your dad, aren't you? When word gets to all these colleges that you stole a final exam, you can kiss all your dreams goodbye. I was absolutely horrified. You know I didn't steal that. You can't do this. Of course I can. I can do anything I want. There might be a way out for you, though. And what's that? You'll be competing in the Maths Olympiad tomorrow. The participant we have now is an idiot. And you're... A stupid genius. I need that trophy while I'm principal. You better win it for me. Or else. How can I be ready for it by tomorrow? <laughs> that sounds like your personal problem. And with that, she just shoved me out of her office. I spent the whole night cramming volumes of math books. The next morning, my heart was pounding when we made it to the competition venue. I really had to do well. My whole future was at stake. After a series of grueling oral and written exams for hours, the results were finally announced. And first prize goes to Fairview School. No one was more shocked than I was. I walked onto the stage in a trance, while Miss Una had already flown up there to receive the trophy, and she kept hugging me and saying how proud she was. The announcer turned to me and said, We've never had a participant win by such a huge margin. Is there anyone as smart as you in your school? Oh, God, I really didn't want to answer that. I would sound like a pompous butthead. No, no, I'm the smartest. Amazing. We can't wait to see what you do at the state championship. Wait, what? I thought this nightmare was over. On the car drive back to the school, Miss Una turned around to me. Start prepping for the state competition next week. There will be so many important people there including the mayor. I'm probably going to be awarded best educator. Her face turned really menacing. You'll win it for me, won't you? And you'll keep that mouth of yours shut next time, if you know what's good for you. 
Janet was horrified when she found out the principal was blackmailing me, but I told her I had to do what she said, and she helped me study day and night till the day of the big competition. Our school was hosting the event, and the place was buzzing with excitement. I was just shaking in my boots. Hours later, the whole school had gathered in the auditorium to hear the results, and the crowd erupted into loud applause and cheers as my name was announced. I went onto the stage to receive my trophy and was asked to sit down for a few questions. Annette, you must be so proud to win this for your school, and it must be amazing to have someone like your principal to encourage you. Would you like to say a few words about her? Oh my God, telling the truth would ruin me. I saw Miss Una glaring at me with a stiff smile on her face. I had no choice. The only thing I can say about her is that she's the most evil principal on the planet. 